Hello and welcome back everyone to Universe Sandbox 2 where we blow up planets and create ridiculousness. Last US2 video didn't too, do too well for some reason, probably because it was too similar to the other one. I should have known two dinosaur modding videos too much. Um, but we still haven't went through everything that's beautiful in this new update and um, I'm sure we can come up with some some more creative ways to destroy the world um i actually one thing that i wanted to do which i didn't test is so the uh tidal forces are fantastic um in this game because if you basically tidal forces if an object gets too close to the other one the gravity rips it apart the difference in gravity it, it's beautiful it's absolutely wonderful. Something I was wondering, because of the water physics that were added, could you have a ball of water, basically? So let's grab something, the mass, let's get the moon, and then let's make it completely water, but it really close to Mars. And I'm curious if when the water is ripped off of the moon, if it will like drip onto Mars and like create oceans. Um, this is just a little bit of functionality. I'm just, I'm not sure how it would work. So might as well test it. This should be close enough to Mars to get ripped apart. I mean, maybe not. You see, learn something new every day. The Earth can get, not Earth, the Moon can get surprisingly close to Mars without there being an issue. So let's go ahead and just manually move it in a bit closer. Oh, oh, it looks how, I, oh, oh my God, it actually is. No kidding. No kidding, that actually worked. Although that's not how I wanted it to work. That's, that, whoa, I can fire an ocean at a planet? Okay, wait, we, we need to do this again, except fire something directly at Mars. There's, this is actually kind of insane. Okay, let's do series still. Let's throw it at Mars, but turn it completely into water. So you can literally chuck an ocean at a planet now and watch it plop across the surface. I, I'm not sure if plop is the correct terminology here, but this this is a... <laughs> dropping an ocean on Mars. I didn't think this would actually be a possibility. Okay, let's see what happens. So it's ice. Uh, let's go ahead and warm it up because we don't want it to be ice. We want it to be liquid when it hits. Uh, so let's set it's like 80 degrees. Hot enough to... Oh. Oh, too high. I don't know why 80 degrees is too high. Um, but we'll, we'll set it to 50. Is it just because it's close to Mars and getting angry? I, I don't know. I can't really see it very well now, though. Okay, so it's it's hitting. It's hitting Mars soon. And let's see if it throws an ocean at it. Like, it is the ocean. And now when it hits Mars, the water is very compact and going very fast. So it's still going to uh, cause some damage, even though it's literally water. Look at that! The water is being thrown across the surface! What the heck? <laughs> this is so beautiful! Oh, wow! Is it gonna, like, spread out and fill in... Oh my god! This update, there's so many... There's so many beautiful little things to be noticed. Okay, is it gonna, like, spread out? Or is it just gonna stay in those squares? Important questions. Oddly, it seems like it's just staying in those streaks. Huh. That's very odd. Very odd indeed. So let's try this again, except we go ahead and put series very close. And let the tidal forces kick in on it. Um, same question as before, but this time series should... There we go. It should be easier to rip apart. 
Still too hot, huh? Really? Oh, I did 80 again. Why did I do 80? If it didn't work the first time, why would it work? 50 degrees is still... Or is that... Uh, I can't tell if it's the heat or if it's... Nope, it's just being ripped apart. So this is creating a cloud of water vapor around Mars because the tidal forces are ripping it apart. And the question is, if these uh, clouds hit Mars, is it going to fill Mars with water? Like, there's so many questions to be had right now. There is actually a ring of water around Mars now. Which is kind of lit, but at the same time, that's not... That's not the point. It does look really cool though. <laughs> We've got an ocean around Mars. Now if we move Mars a tiny bit to the side, let's just grab Mars and just shimmy it over a little bit. Will the water start like forming on the surface? It's like space weather, space clouds. Let's soak them all up. All of that yummy H2O. Let's go hydro, homies. Okay, how's how's it looking? I I think that there is actually yeah. So so it kind of works. I think we just need a lot more water. It seems like that when we did it with the moon. It was much more effective. Maybe a lot of the water is destroyed or lost in the process, or maybe in order to reach a certain size, once it reaches a certain size, the chunks act different. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. The music intensified very quickly. Okay, um... Let's try this again. Moon. Pretty close to Mars, not a huge issue. Moon, we turn into water and set to a comfy 20 degrees. Okay, something should happen. They're so close together. Ah, ah, so close. Okay, so let's, let's, now that we know what we're doing, we're going to try this again, but slowly and incrementally changing this. So we don't want the moon to hit Mars. We want it to simply sprinkle water upon it. We want it to basically be a rainstorm, but with its own guts. There we go. Oh, wow. That did a lot of ripping apart very quickly. The moon is actually regaining that mass from the ring. Okay, so looking at Mars, we, we do have effects on the surface. Maybe that's not water, though. Maybe it's just, like, a strange, uh, marks. Like, is it just getting... No, look, you can see... You can see water and ice forming on the surface of Mars now. Like, you can definitely see this happening. And the moon... The moon is still one... Oh! Oh, look! 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 As planned! Guys! Guys, <laughs> oceans are falling. <laughs> the oceans are falling onto it. Oh my god, the bigger pieces actually do just form oceans where they hit. That is amazing. Oh my god. Okay. This, now this is epic. Can I just say that this is true epicness? I mean, we are building oceans with the moon that is orbiting Mars. I don't know if this has any practical use, but pretty cool. And it looks like they've actually balanced out. So Mars now has a moon made of water, which is at 133 degrees because of the tidal forces. So it'll never actually freeze. And I think the moon's tidal forces are, yeah, heated up the, uh, heated up Mars as well. What's the average temperature? Average temperature is 100. Look at that. You can really, uh, really see the damage there. Oh, some parts are very warm. They're both very warm. But it's keeping the water liquid, and they, they've got a nice, a nice balancing act here. 
Hey Spike, what's up, man? Okay, this this is looking fantastic. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious how much water we can add to Mars in this way. Let's just pump up the mass of the moon again to get it to start doing a thing. Which planet would you rather live on? Or which celestial body? Well, considering there's only one that won't kill me right now, I think I'm going to be slightly biased towards Earth. However, if there was ever a chance to, like, be a part of the colonization of Mars, totally be a part of that. I mean, once-in-a-lifetime experience. Wow, look at this. Okay, so we're just going to make the moon bigger until it just barely grazes Mars. And then, oh, I wanted to catch that, but I didn't. Actually, when it absorbs Mars, it, is the land just going to pop out now that it has a core of, like, rock? Wow, this one little piece of debris is orbiting the moon perfectly right off of the surface. Would you look at that? It's like right on the surface and it's just, wow, that would make space travel very challenging. Very challenging. Okay, so this brings up a few questions. First off, Will the orange glowy bits of the planet still be glowy if we remove all the silicate? I'm going to test that in a bit because I don't want to ru- Wow, look at its perfect orbit. That That's so odd. <laughs> I, I really like it. Good, good job, little fragment. You managed. You managed to survive, although you're disappearing now, so that's kind of depressing. Okay, so let's go ahead and decrease the amount of water until we can see if it looks at all like Mars, or is it just like the moon again? Oh, it turned back into the moon. Now oh, that's exciting. Look at the happy moon. But the question is, if we get rid of all the silicate... Hmm, there's an issue here. Water doesn't turn orange. Water doesn't turn orange. Very, very disappointing. There's also like strange ridges, although I guess there could be ice that would explain the ridges, like the further down you go into the planet. Although ice floats, so that doesn't really work, and we can see the ice up here as well. Hmm. There are different types of water though, and there's different like stages it gets into, or is that ice? Well, ice has a lot of stages, I know that. There's like ice... I think I've heard up to like ice seven before, maybe ice six. Uh, I don't, I don't know the difference between them. It's just under different pressures and stuff. Ice gets wacky, very wacky. I am a boomer, uh, zoomer. I'm, I'm a zoomer boomer. Being a bomb a boom. Okay, so I guess to end this out, we're gonna put water moon A. Hey, don't run away from me when I'm talking to you. I gave creation to you. Not really birth, because planets aren't born. Okay, let's put our water moon creation up against Earth. Okay, it looks like Mexico is never going to have a water shortage again. Actually, more of Cuba. Cuba is never going to have a water shortage again. So just America in general. California, they can finally water their lawns. Here it goes, folks. The end of an era. I actually, I wonder how a ball of water colliding with Earth would act. Like, when water... When you hit water hard enough and fast enough, it does act like a solid, but I don't know how that scales. Like, is that always true? Because the water molecules need time to move out of the way of each other, but like, I have no clue what would happen. Well, look, the Earth gets hit and like destroys all the land, but now the amount of water is now causing the oceans to rise, which is another huge issue. 
the Earth can't decide whether the oceans should get bigger or smaller because on the one hand, it's over a thousand degrees Celsius. On the other hand, the composition of Earth has shifted quite a bit. The plasma water is now flowing over the Earth, which will probably evaporate and then come back stronger and mightier than before. Let's give Earth some time to cool down. Wow, parts of the Earth were over 40,000 degrees. That is impressive. Ooh. Ooh, it's icy now, even though the average surface temperature is not. Okay, let's give it time to get those warm areas cooled down. Oh my god, it's still at 20,000 degrees. Oh my god. <laughs> the impact site is just very warm. Okay, this is taking too long. Just average surface temperature, 20. Bada bing, bada boom. Beautiful. That worked actually way better than I thought it would. Minimum temperature, 20. Wow. So let's see, oh wow. That's a lot of water. It looks like Asia really won this one out. Um, the natural high elevation has given Chen. Oh, also Australia winning a lot. Um, the, um, some of the Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, South and Eastern Africa. Y Europe's kind of doomed unless you lived in these highly elevated areas that nobody actually lives in. Um, and Alaska is now more relevant than ever. For some reason, like... A tiny bit of like Nova Scotia or something survived there can't really tell with everything so muddled well, it looks looks pretty good but with that I'm gonna leave you all here thank you for watching leave a like and subscribe we've learned today what happens when you drop an ocean on planets and also don't forget to join the discord discord.gg slash spookvooper it's election season again in the Vuperian government and um, I don't know other things, uh, have fun, don't die. Yeah, good, good note, good note to end on.